Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, I have one thing at the top and then we'll get into q and I'll start by sharing some more information on, president's, uh, pre on the President's event earlier today with Senator Bernie Sanders. 27 million Americans have asthma, including 4 million kids. The reality is the price of inhalers is way too high for too many Americans. Families can pay anywhere between $200 and $600 for inhalers without insurance, despite the fact that it costs less than five bucks to make an inhaler. That is why last year, the Federal Trade Commission and the FDA announced efforts to crack down on falsely claimed patents and increase competition of inhalers to lower costs. As a result of this administration's actions, one inhaler manufacturer removed patents from a regulatory list. Last month, three of the four largest inhaler manufacturers announced that they will cap the cost of inhalers for many patients at 35 bucks per month. This is on the top of our work, uh, this is on top of our work to lower the cost of prescription drugs through the President's uh, Inf Inflation Reduction Act which every single congressional Republican opposed. Thanks to the law, Medicare can now negotiate lower drug prices for American families. But President Biden wants to expand those efforts by applying the $2,000 cap on prescription drug costs and 35 bucks for insulin to all Americans. This work to deliver lower health care costs is in stark contrast to what congressional Republicans have proposed. They are still working to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act and gut Medicaid. And they just released a budget that would lead to devastating cuts to Medicare and the Affordable Care Act, increase housing costs and prescription drug costs for families, and huge giveaways for the wealthy and the biggest corporations. President Biden has been clear. This will not happen on his watch. The Biden-Harris administration will continue working with partners like Bernie Sanders to, do, to deliver results for the American people. With that, all right. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, two questions, starting with the earthquake in Taiwan. Has the government there asked for anything yet from the United States? And will the U.S. coordinate with China if Taiwan does request any kind of assistance? So what I will say is that we continue to closely monitor uh, the earthquake impacting Taiwan. And we certainly pray for all those who are affected. Uh, and uh, we, are, we, are, we are standing by, the United States is standing by on the ready uh, for any necessary assistance. I don't have anything else to provide beyond that, but we're closely monitoring and we are ready to assist. Is there any reason to believe at this point that the earthquake will affect the visits next week by the leaders of Japan and the Philippines for the summit? So don't have any change of schedule. And then lastly, I'm sorry, I know I said two, but no, I was okay. there. 
Sorry, Jeremy. Does the president think the meeting he had last night with Muslim leaders um, was useful? And is there any reaction or comment on a Palestinian American doctor walking out in the middle of that meeting? So let me just say a couple of things just at the top about last night and how important it is. As you know, the president and the vice president, they continued their tradition of honoring the Muslim community during Ramadan by hosting a meeting with Muslim community leaders to discuss issues of importance to the community. Let's not forget, uh, this is uh, the sit-down conversation. The meeting was asked, and it was supposed, it's supposed to be private. They wanted a private meeting. That was something that, uh, as we have done our outreach, as you know, senior White House officials have been doing this outreach. The president uh, and the vice president have been in communication with uh, the community uh, regularly since October. And this is something that they asked. They asked for a private meeting, a working meeting, if you will. And so we understand what's how this community is feeling. It is deeply painful moment uh, for many in the Arab and Muslim communities. Uh, the president also expressed his commitment to continue working to secure an immediate ceasefire as part of a deal to free the hostages and significantly increase humanitarian aid into Gaza. And the president made clear that he mourns the loss of every innocent life in this conflict. Palestinian and Israeli. The president and vice president committed, uh, are committed to continue engaging with these leaders moving forward. As I mentioned, we've had regular engagement uh, with uh, members of those communities. Uh, as it relates to um, the, the part of the question that you just asked me, about a participant walking out. Look, I want to be really careful here. We said that we would keep this, these uh, conversations private, so I'm not going to continue. I'm not going to comment on a, uh, any private discussions. Uh, but as I said many times from this podium, uh, the president respects an uh, American, any American's right uh, to peacefully protest, and uh, we are going to continue to have these conversations, obviously, uh, with that community. Go ahead, Nancy. Thank Thanks, you. Karine. How did the White House decide who would attend the Iftar dinner? So uh, what I will say is um, I want to be careful here. Uh, you know, this meeting, again, was decided after we had done outreach for some time now. Uh, we wanted to make sure that this was a private meeting and that uh, participants had an opportunity to be, um, you know, to be to be honest and to be able to share their thoughts and feelings uh, about how, um, you know, how where they are, how they feel about the situation happening, obviously in the Middle East. Uh, I don't have a, a process uh, to lay out how uh, the list came about, uh, and so I'm, you know, don't have anything to, to lay out in that realm. But as you know, and as I as I stated a couple of times, we've done outreach. Uh, for this past several weeks, several months, uh, to the Muslim, to the Arab community, Palestinian community, and um, and heard from them directly. And they spoke, we listened, and uh, we hope that they feel like they had an opportunity to express themselves and had an opportunity uh, in front of the president and the vice president uh, to talk about an incredibly painful time. Was last night the president's first opportunity to speak face to face with someone who had been on the ground providing aid in Gaza? So. Look, I can't speak to um, uh, the different uh, the, the different leaders who have been in this meeting. It is a private meeting. We want to make sure that we give folks the opportunity to feel that they have some, um, you know, some uh, that they know that uh, they can speak in, in uh, and just be clear to us and and have that and be know that it, it is uh, those conversations are in confidence. Uh, so don't want to read out who's been in the meeting or uh, or any specifics in that realm. I'm going to let them. I'm going to let folks who if the folks who attended want to speak to that and they can. What I can say is we've had multiple conversations. Uh, whether it's senior senior officials uh, from the White House, whether it's this pro this president, we not all conversations uh, we uh, we obviously read out. Uh, we keep uh, we try to keep these private conversations in private. Uh, I don't have a list of of, of folks of of um, you know who who they are, where they come from, if they've been uh, to Gaza. That is something I want to be super mindful of. What was the president's reaction to the fact that the doctor decided to leave the dinner? It's very, very similar to what I said to Darlene. The president respects. He respects, um, um, you know, any individual, any American, uh, for them to peacefully protest. He understands that this is a, a painful moment uh, for, uh, for many Americans uh, across the country. And so he respects their, 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 uh, their freedom to peacefully protest. I don't have anything. Uh, you know, anything outside of that, they have a right to peacefully protest, and we're going to continue to respect that. Catch you.
Thanks, Kareem. Uh, do you, uh, does the administration expect there to be an uh, emergency funding package for the Key Bridge in Baltimore to be announced before the president visits the city on Friday? So as you know, the Department of Transportation just last week announced $60 million uh, to be able to uh, put forward in, um, in, in uh, building, having to rebuild that bridge. Uh, I don't have anything outside of, of additional funding. The president has been very, very clear. He wants to make sure that we, uh, we make the, the community of Baltimore whole again. Uh, and he is said that the federal government will cover, uh, will certainly cover uh, the bridge being built. Our focus right now, outside of the rebuilding that bridge, is making sure that the ports are open, making sure that we continue to um, uh, do that recovery, clean out, uh, clean out uh, that area. And so that's been the focus. The president's going to go on Friday. He will see himself. We'll have more information of of what's uh, what's going on on the ground. Uh, but he gets regular updates, you know. And I think that's important as well. Our hearts go out uh, to the lives that were lost uh, during uh, uh, that that evening um, or that early morning. It's a sad, uh, obviously sad, uh, sad news, and we are with the families who are mourning, who are mourning their lost ones at this Not time. Ukraine. Uh, the White House issued a statement yesterday that was dismissive of Speaker Johnson's idea to tie that package to uh, the policy uh, banning future LNG exports. Um, you know, it said that the president wants the A package passed right away, and that you support the LNG export ban. But um, can you clarify whether that means you're you're ruling out? that proposal from Speaker Johnson, like is that off the table or or is this something that you might consider down the road? I mean, we've been very clear, right? We've been very clear. The reporting we have said, as you said from our statement, is not true. Uh, we've been really clear about House Republicans should pass the bipartisan national security agreement that already pla passed with overwhelming support out of the Senate, 70 to 29. You've heard me say that many times before. We need to make sure Ukraine has what it needs to defend itself against Russia's aggression. We're going to continue to be clear about that. Uh, and there's a way to get Ukraine what they need. All the speaker has to do is put that national security supplemental on the floor. The president supports the pause uh, on pending, which is on pending, obviously, additional approvals of L LNG export licenses to evaluate the economic and climate impacts on consumers and communities. He supports that pause. And there is a way. There is a way to deal with what Ukrainians are fighting for right now. They're fighting for their democracy. Uh, they're fighting for their freedom against uh, the aggression of Mr. Putin. There's a way to get them the assistance that they need. And that is to pass that bipartisan, we believe that would be a, a bipartisan support, uh, national security supplemental that got bipartisan support. If he puts it on the floor, we know. We know for a fact that Republicans would vote for it. We know where Democrats stand. He needs to put that on the floor. Jack Gay. Green, the meeting uh, yesterday was a scaled back event, as we understand it. What does, or how troubling is it to the White House that prominent Arab American leaders are declining to come to the White House? I mean, look, you know, I want to be really clear, and we've been saying this many times before. Um, number one, we've done, we've done these outreach, we listened. Uh, the community wanted to have uh, what we thought uh, change the format, do a meeting where it was a working meeting. We respected that. We listened to them, and we had a working meeting. Uh, and so want to be really respectful of that. And look, we understand it's a very painful time. We understand that. And we respect that. And so, look, I, I can't speak to individuals who want to attend, not want to attend. That's for them to speak to. The president is going to continue to, uh, and his administration, obviously, senior officials are going to continue to have these conversations. We're going to continue to listen to the community. That's what a president does, and that's what this president will, will continue to do. Um, I know the president spoke with Chef Jose Andres. Does the president agree with Chef Andres that Israel is using food as a weapon? Look, we understand how Chef Andres is feeling, right? We just lost. Uh, members of his team, I'm sure, who felt like family to him as well. Uh, the op-ed was very powerful. What he does is heroic, not just in Gaza, around the world, providing food, providing that essential humanitarian assistance. And we, um, you know, you, you heard from the president last night in his statement. He, it is, uh, he's outraged and he's heartbroken. We are all heartbroken here by those seven lives lost. And so we are going to continue to mourn. Uh, with them, with um, with the with Chef Jose Andres, and obviously the families, uh, I'm just not going to 
he's going to speak for himself. Uh, we are very clear about where we stand. I think the president's uh, statement was incredibly powerful, impactful, uh, and really truly lays out where how he feels about the current situation. And on another topic, Corrine, how worried is the White House about bird flu? Uh, so, look, this is something that we are certainly monitoring. Uh, we have been, uh, CDC has been certainly working on, on top, working, uh, working and focusing on this. Uh, you know, we take health and safety of the American people seriously. Uh, it is very important to this president. Our top priority is to keep communities healthy, safe, and informed. Uh, we are closely tracking this, monitoring this, as I just stated, of the reports that are out there and have active, relevant agencies to coordinate with and support local authorities. The CDC has said the risk uh, to human health uh, from this outbreak is low. Uh, they are continuing to monitor and will continue to coordinate with relevant agencies and officials. This is, when it comes, again, when it comes to the public health of the American people, we take that very seriously and we'll continue to track this. Finally, what's the White House's response to some on the left who think that Justice Sotomayor should retire so that the president could appoint a replacement? And I've been asked this question before here at the podium, and when it comes to those types of decision, decisions, those are personal decisions. Uh, that is, uh, regardless if it's uh, Justice Sotomayor or any other just, justice on the bench, that is for them to make. That is a decision for that justice to make. Again, it's a personal decision. That is not something that we get involved in, but it is something for, obviously, any justice on the bench. Uh, they, are, they should be given the space uh, and the freedom to make that decision. I'm just, I won't have anything else to say on that. Yes. Thanks, Green. How is Israel going to conduct that investigation into the strike that killed those world Central Kitchen Aid workers? Look, we, you heard from the president last night. You heard from my colleague at, from the National Security Council yesterday and also earlier today. I think the president's statement was very, very strong, right? Very straightforward. Uh, he, wants to, uh, he wants to see a, um, a, an investigation that's swift, uh, an investigation that's comprehensive, uh, that has, uh, that brings accountability, uh, and he wants to make sure that it is made public. Uh, we leave it to, uh, obviously, uh, the Israeli government to do that investigation, uh, but we want to make sure that it's swift, it's comprehensive, that it's made public, and it is important. We need to uh, get to, uh, certainly get to the bottom of exactly what happened. Can you explain what that would entail, a kind of investigation like this? This is a strike that happened in an active war zone. Can you give us some detail on what it looks like? Look, IDF said they have an ongoing investigation is underway. I think that's important. Uh, we've called for this investigation to happen. I think that's important. We wanted to see it happen in a swift manner. Uh, we want to make sure that the findings are public uh, and that uh, there is accountability. I want to be very careful here. I'm not going to get ahead of that process. There is a process underway. Uh, I believe uh, my NSC colleague mentioned that they have some initial uh, findings. It's preliminary. Uh, and so uh, that process is going to continue. I'm going to let that process go underway and and uh, and uh, let uh, let uh, the Israeli government speak right, to that. For the sake of transparency, can you explain what that process is and if the U.S. is confident in that process? Look, we're not. I'm not going to get into hypotheticals. I'm not going to get into uh, that particular uh, a particular process here. We want to see something that is comprehensive. We want to see something that leads to accountability. Uh, we want to see it be swift, and we want to make sure that it is made available to the public. That's what uh, that's what the Israeli government, that's what Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu said he's going to do, and we're going to let that process flow. We're going to let that process happen. So Kirby said earlier today that they're hoping to get in the books a meeting in person next week with an Israeli delegation. Yeah. Can you provide any more details on that and who might come? Uh, I'm not going to provide any details on that. What I can say is basically from the readout is that uh, the expectation is to have a meeting in person. I think it was important that there was a virtual meeting uh, that occurred obviously on Monday to talk about uh, the Rafa operations. We've been very clear where we stand on this. Very clear. Uh, we believe there has to be uh, uh, alternative ways uh, to deal with Hamas in, in Gaza, as we're specifically in, in Rafah, uh, a military operation that we believe is not uh, the way to move forward. Uh, there is a active conversations happening with the Israeli government and obviously our government, and I think that's important. I'm not going to go into details from here. As you, as you heard from us, as you heard from uh, my colleague, there's going to be, hopefully, next week, uh, in-person uh, meeting, and we're looking forward to continuing those really critical, important conversations. Okay. you anticipate any changes to the president's policy toward Israel and Gaza as a result of yesterday's strike? Well, I can say that uh, nothing has changed, uh, and uh, 
we've been clear about that since uh, certainly uh, since yesterday. We are going to continue to have those really tough conversations, right? Uh, important tough conversations about how uh, Israel Israel um, uh, moves forward with their operation. We want to make sure that civilians are kept safe, that are protected, and also folks who are providing humanitarian aid. The president was very, very clear. Uh, he also said in his statement that Israel needs to do more. Uh, we've been very clear about that as well. We're going to continue to have those conversations with our Israel co counterparts. And, um, and look, you know, this is important to this president. But I will also add, that's why the hostage deal is so critical. That's why the president has been working 24-7 along with his, uh, with his team to get that hostage deal done. And if we get a hostage deal, it means that we can get more humanitarian aid into Israel, it, I'm sorry, into Gaza, pardon me, uh, and also means that we get to a, a ceasefire. We get into a ceasefire uh, so that we can get that aid in, so that we can get also hostages home. So that is what we're going to continue also to work on. Do you have a progress report on that hostage deal? I don't have a progress report. You saw in the president's statement that his team continues to have those conversations in Cairo right now. Uh, that is important. Uh, and he, uh, you know, we, we wish I can, I wish I can stand here today and say there's a deal. Uh, but those conversations continue. We're, uh, we have made this a priority. This president has made this a priority to get that hostage deal. It's important to get those hostages home to their family. It's important uh, to get that humanitarian aid and with a, you know, leading to a ceasefire. Okay. And just one more follow-up on the meeting yesterday. Dr. Ahmad said that he had handed the president a letter from an eight-year-old orphan girl who was living in Rafa. Has the president read that letter? So I'm going to be really careful here. I'm not going to speak to contents of a private meeting. Just not going to do that from here. The doctor speaks for himself. He's free to do that. But we have said we're going to keep these meetings private so that we gave uh, folks who attended the meeting uh, the, you know, the opportunity uh, to be honest, the opportunity uh, to make sure to uh, have a safe place uh, to share their thoughts with us. So I'm just not going to read out the content of a meet, private meeting. Well, since he chose himself to publicly disclose that he had shared this letter and the contents of that letter with uh, the media, can you say whether the president? Has Again, read it? I'm not going to speak to any content of the pri of a private meeting. That is something that many members uh, who attended, all of them truly who attended, wanted to, this to be private. We're going to keep we're going to keep our side to this, our side of the promise. This letter, in part, uh, says, "I beg you, President Biden, stop them from entering Rafa." without getting into his reaction, potential reaction to that. Um, does the White House believe that Israel entering Rafah is something that President Biden can stop? We're having conversations, important conversations. The first one happened virtually, and actually last week, last week uh, when the Israeli um, uh, uh, foreign minister was here. Uh, obviously, we had a conversation. Jake Sullivan, uh, uh, Secretary Austin, and others had conversations, and that involved the Rafa oper operations, or Rafa more broadly. And so it started then. There was a virtual uh, conversation on Monday, and it's going to continue. Our hope that we can get to a place uh, where we are indeed protecting uh, innocent civilian lives in Rafah. You heard, you've heard my colleagues talk about there's more than one million uh, Palestinians there who, who sought refuge, who are there seeking refuge. And so we want to make sure that their lives are protected. We know that there are uh, Hamas operators there in Rafah. And so we want to make sure that Israel is able to uh, you know, do what it needs to do in getting uh, in getting those operators. But it is important, Hamas operators to be more exact, but it is important that we protect those civilian lives. We protect those lives. So those conversations are happening. We're hoping to see, we're expecting, I shouldn't say hoping, expecting that it'll happen in person next week. And that's what we're going to work towards. And just on the president's visit to Baltimore on Friday, <laughs> do you know if he is going to the actual site of the collapsed bridge? and? Would he be uh, willing to meet with family members of the workers that were killed? So I know there's a lot of interest in the president's trip on Friday. The president obviously is very much looking forward to going to Baltimore, being there for the for the people of Baltimore. You heard him say he's going to be there for as long as it takes to make sure that we make them whole again. Uh, we'll have more to share on what that day, what Friday is going to look like in the upcoming day or so. Okay.
again. Thanks, Green. So what is the accountability that the U.S. wants to see here? Well, let's let the uh, ongoing investigation happen. Uh, we want to make sure, the President said this, swift. We want it to, this, uh, it to be swift. We want it to be, uh, brings to, uh, lead to accountability. We want it to be comprehensive and to make it public. And so we're not going to get ahead of that. Uh, want to see what, uh, uh, what the Israeli government uh, says. Uh, when they do this investigation, just want to be really mindful about so you're that. You're not asking for anything specifically <laughs> to take place. We want to see uh, the investigation. Okay, and the changes. Can you detail what changes that the U.S. would like <coughs> to see Israel make as a result, and what even makes you think that, as a result of these recent deaths, that they would make changes when they so, haven't so far? And I kind of said this earlier, moments ago. We are going to continue to have those tough conversations with our Israeli counterparts. We're going to continue uh, to make very clear that uh, we have to uh, protect uh, innocent civilian lives. That is something that we want to make sure uh, is a priority uh, as, as uh, Israel is uh, moving forward with, uh, with their, uh, their operation against Hamas, a terrorist organization. We understand the importance of them doing that, but we want to also make sure that innocent civilians' lives are protected. And folks who are out there, brave folks, uh, brave people who are out there providing that humanitarian aid. We want to make sure that their lives are protected, those lives are protected. We're going to have those tough, tough conversations, as we have been. And so that's part of, this is part of it, right? This is part of diplomacy. This is part of uh, having um, honest, real, frank conversations. And, and in respect to those conversations, John Kirby said earlier today that the White House made its outrage known about this all the way up to the presidential level. Aside from the statement that the president released last night, how has the president made his outrage known about this to the Israelis? I mean, I think the statement that he put out was pretty clear, right? I mean, it showed his outrage. It showed how he was heartbroken. That's the first couple of words in the statement. He's outraged. He's heartbroken. And we also laid out what we want to see and the conversations that we have been having. But it also lifts up the importance of having that hostage deal, getting that done, getting to a ceasefire, getting that humanitarian aid, making sure that those hostages come home to their loved ones. So. There's a lot of work to be done. We're going to continue to do that work. But I think that statement made it loud and clear, made it loud and clear where the president stands. Okay, Karen. Thanks. Um, just to go back to bird flu, um, two questions on that. Has the president been briefed on the cases that have been identified so far? The president has been briefed, yes. Okay. Um, and in your answer earlier, you had focused on the health aspect of it. But the nation's largest producer of eggs has temporarily stopped production at plants in Texas and Michigan because some chickens have tested positive. And what are the concerns about supply chain issues and price increases? And is there something the administration can be doing or should be doing right now to limit the potential impact on economic activity? So obviously any economic impact uh, is something that uh, we closely monitor. So we're going to closely track that, closely monitor that, monitor that as it relates to that particular um, uh, company that would refer you to CDC on exactly what they're doing and, and what, ha what is happening there specifically. But we're always going to assess, we're always going to keep a, keep God bless you. And we're always going to uh, uh, monitor uh, monitor the economic impacts of any any big changes like that or any changes like that. But obviously, uh, one of the most important thing for this administration is the health and safety of American public. And so that's how we take that very seriously. Uh, that's how we're going to operate. That is the number one uh, thing here. And CDC is has been working with rele uh, relevant agencies uh, to make sure that uh, we we keep the American public protected here. Great. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, thank you. First, the uh, so you guys started draining the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to try and help with the Putin price hike a few years ago. You said you were going to refill it, but now it doesn't seem like that's happening. Why? Well, from I, I believe the Department of Energy is uh, is responsible for for that uh, particular uh, component is refilling refilling that. So I would refer you to the Department of Energy. I know there were certain components to that, uh, and how they were going to move forward in refilling uh, refilling it. I, I, they would have more specifics on that for you. Okay. And why isn't federal immigration law tougher on border crossers who come here and are accused of serious crimes? 
So, um, are you speaking of a specific case? There's been a story in New York, an eight-person crew of border crossers found with drugs and guns. Six of them now are out on bail. Does President Biden think policies like that are making the country safer? So I want to be really careful. That's an active case, so don't want to comment on an active case. But anyone found guilty, and we've been very clear about that, anyone found guilty of a crime should be held accountable. We have been very, very clear about that. Uh, and if a, if a person poses a danger to a community, they should be detained uh, pretrial. So more generally then, do you guys think that some big cities in this country have liberal DAs that are too soft on crime? Look, what I will say is I'm not going to speak to every state or city here. I, it's not for me to speak to. We have been very clear about this. Anyone who commits a crime and is found guilty needs to be held accountable. That's what this pre president believes. Uh, and we are certainly uh, very much, we welcome local law enforcement support and cooperation in apprehending and removing individuals in this country who pose a risk uh, to our national security or also public safety. If they are found guilty, they should be held accountable. That's our, that's where we stand on this. Back, okay. Yeah, this, I mean, um, two questions. One is, you heard um, the president being outraged by the strike uh, on aid workers and in the past the president has also referred to indiscriminate bombing. I, I'm wondering if you can articulate why thus far there has been no consequences and, and why there are no consequences. So, so I want to be clear, it's, it's not me referring to that, this is the president's statement. I'm just lifting up the statement from last night yeah. where he says I am outraged and heartbroken. <laughs> first, the first basically line, part of the first line of the president's uh, uh, president's uh, statement from last night, and it speaks for itself. And he talked about how he talked about how there's more to, that needs to be done uh, to protect uh, innocent civilians uh, in Gaza. Why there have been no consequences thus far for any types of behavior that the president has been outraged by? It will. We've had, we are having conversations with the Israeli government. We've been very clear about that. Those conversations have been tough. We've been very public about those conversations. On this particular instant, uh, there will be an investigation. There's an investigation currently happening. The president has said he wants it to be swift. He wants it to be uh, comprehensive. And he wants to, there to see accountability, to bring account, account, right? To bring accountability. He said that in his statement. And he wants to make sure that it is public. So. We're going to let that process move forward. Uh, and, you know, you said it yourself. The president also has been publicly clear here uh, about what, uh, how he feels about what he has seen. We do not want to see innocent civilians die here. We do not want that. Uh, and we're going to continue to be clear and have those conversations from the president on down with our counterparts in, in, in the Israeli government. Uh, and those conversations are tough. Right, you think about Rafa, the Rafa operations. We've been clear about that, how where we stand, that a military operations is not the way to go. There are alternative ways of getting those Hamas operators in, in Rafa. That's why we had a, a meeting, a virtual meeting on Monday. That's why we're going to have an in-person meeting with the Israeli government. The person, ta the president takes this very seriously. He wants to make sure that innocent civilian lives are protected, including those humanitarian aid workers who are out there. And yes, he's outraged, and he's heartbroken by what happened yesterday. And we're going to have those conversations with the Israeli government, as we have been. It's going to continue. If I can also go back to something that was asked earlier um, yeah. about the president meeting with any aid workers or anybody who's been inside of Gaza since October 7th. Yeah. Um, it is a question I've also privately posed to yeah. um, some of your colleagues, and it feels like a yes or no question whether or not he's actually met with somebody who's been inside. And, and the reason I'm asking is a number of people at the meeting said, to their knowledge, this was the first time the president had actually yeah. spoken to anybody who's been inside of Gaza since October 7th. Well, well here's saying. what I can tell you. He's met with community leaders who are uh, obviously from the Muslim community, the Arab community, the Palestinian community. Uh, I would let them speak for themselves on if they've been to Gaza. Uh, you know, I don't have any, we don't have any information to share uh, about that. Uh, we want to be really mindful uh, that the, this meeting uh, and many meetings that we've held, had have been private. We want to respect that. Uh, and so just going to leave it there. I think what is important, though, like I understand the question. Wait, no, no, no. no updates no, no. from, you know, what the situation no, no. tangible. I, no, I, I understand, right? I, I get what you're saying, the, the importance of 
hearing from folks who have been on the ground in Gaza. I totally understand that. But I think it's also important that the president is hearing directly from the community, directly from the community, who are, some of them are personally affected by what's happening in Gaza, right? And so the fact that senior White House officials are having those conversations, tough conversations, is important. The, the fact that the president has done so as well is important. Uh, but I, I hear your question, but we are also hearing from folks from the community, having these sit-down conversations. The community leaders that were here yesterday and met with the president and the vice president, they asked for a working group conversation. And we listened and we made that happen. And the president heard directly from them what they are going through, what they see, how painful it has been for them. So I think that's important as well. We can't, we can't not, you know, um, lift that up as well. Okay. Uh, thank you, Karim. Um, just while you've been up there, there's been some reporting that Biden is going to speak to Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu tomorrow. Can you confirm, confirm I don't that? have a call to confirm at this time. As you know, the president and, and the prime minister have spoken several times, uh, more than, I believe, two dozen times since October 7th. Uh, and uh, and I've said this already. Uh, his uh, both 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 administration, both governments talk to each other. Their counterparts talk to each other every day. Uh, just don't have anything to confirm at this time. And, uh, on, on Uganda, a court upheld an anti-LGBTQ law that um, would mean pr prison sentences for people who support gay rights in that country. I just wanted to see if you have anything from the podium. To yeah, see. a couple of things. The announcement that some provisions of Uganda's Anti-Homosexuality Act have been removed by the Constitution, Constitutional Court is a small and insufficient step towards safeguarding human rights. The United States is deeply concerned about the remaining provisions which undermine public health, human rights, and Uganda's international reputation. As the President has said time and time again, no one should have to live in constant fear, nor be subjected to violence or discrimination. It is wrong. We will continue to work to advance respect for human rights for all in Uganda and also around the world. Okay, I'm gonna take a couple one more. question, sorry. And um, just going back to the um, LNG piece for a moment, I think everybody in this room, we have a sense for how the president personally feels about Ukraine and Ukraine funding. I mean, he's made it abundantly clear over the course of two years. This LNG temporary pause doesn't have as high of a hope pro profile. I and mean, can you give any sense for what it is that the president, why he cares so much about it, whether he has shared with you any sort of deep views that he has on this particular very kind of targeted policy? Yeah, so look, um, the pause on the pending uh, approvals of LNG export, it is important. It's, and it is important to understand uh, the climate and economic impacts. That's why it's so important, right, uh, of these LNG exports. And, and, it, and it is the impacts on consumers, right, the impacts on communities, and that's why we, the president supports these LNG pauses. So we're going to continue to meet our LNG needs of our allies, uh, and the temporary pause does not impact current LNG exports. But there is some, by having these pauses, it does tell us something that is important to know. Uh, and so that's why the president supports it. As it relates to what we've been hearing from the speaker, Speaker Johnson, we've been very clear. If, in order to, if we really want to help the people of Ukraine, the brave people of Ukraine, we got to get that national security supplemental done. He has to put that on the floor. It will get overwhelming bipartisan support. We know that to be true. That's how we can help the people of Ukraine. I guess what I'm trying to say is, the yeah. is the president personally invested in this ban or this temporary pause the way he is? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look. When we talk about the existential threat of climate, this is something that the president has said it is, it is incredibly important to deal with this emergency. Uh, and he has done more, taken more robust action than any other president. This is part of this, right? And so the president has been not just talked about it, but has taken action. So I would look at this as part of the action that he's taken to deal with climate, the climate crisis. And you know, it is, a, it is indeed a crisis. When he walked into this administration, he talked about four crises that we had to deal with as, as Americans. And climate change is not just as Americans, as a world. And so climate crisis was one of them. And he's taken action, and he's going to continue to do that. And he's been robust. He's, it's been comprehensive, more than any, uh, any other president. 
This sort of seems like a smaller piece to that it, larger. It's a, I, would, I would put it together in that larger piece. Yes, it's a smaller piece of the of obviously uh, the the larger initiative of what we're trying to do. But it's also critical. It's important. Uh, and um, look, the reports that are out there as it relates to Speaker Johnson, they are not true. We know how the best way to get assistance for Ukraine is to pass that national security supplemental. That's what we want to see. It'll it'll get done in an overwhelmingly in a bipartisan way. Go ahead. I know, I know. Go ahead. I got it. Um, on the World Central Kitchen strike, I mean, is there concern that this complicates the temporary peer project? That you know, does it make this effort more challenging? The peer. So look, um, Department of Defense will have more an update on the peer. We're going to continue to move forward with that. Look, the president. When the president said he's going to do everything that he can uh, to get that important humanitarian aid into into Gaza into uh, to the uh, people, the Palestinian people, uh, innocent civilians here, he meant it. And so you've seen us do the the uh, airplane drops. You're, we're in a couple of weeks. It's going to be we're going to have that temporary pier. Uh, we're going to continue to work with Israel to get those trucks in. Uh, we understand the dire situation that is currently happening in uh, in Gaza, and we are going to do everything that we can to get that aid in. This is why the hostage deal is so important. This is why we've been working 24/7 to get that done. Get that humanitarian aid, get that ceasefire, and get American American hostages as well of all hostages home uh, to their loved ones. I have to go, but uh, we will see you tomorrow, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.